One of the hardest parts of learning any topic can be figuring out how to stay motivated. And as someone who got their start in machine learning via self-study, I had to learn how to keep myself on track so that I could learn the things that I wanted to know in order to reach my goals. Here's how I did it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Jordan. I'm a PhD student at MIT and YouTuber who talks about AI, machine learning, and emerging technologies, as well as PhD life. I've done more in-depth videos on my journey into machine learning and the tools that I used to get there, so I will link them down below and in the cards if you want to watch them. But without further ado, let's get started. So as someone with ADHD, motivation is a pretty unreliable way for me to attempt to get things done. And because of that, I have to find ways to essentially trick myself or gamify the process of learning things, especially if my goal is either pretty big or pretty far out in the distance, like my PhD. The first thing I do to help keep myself on track is to set a goal, and that's usually in the form of completing a particular project. Now, obviously for something like my PhD, the goal is to finish the PhD, which can then be broken down into sub-projects and things. But when I was first getting into machine learning, my goal was actually pretty simple. It was to finish Andrew Nick's Coursera course on machine learning in two weeks. Now, if you want to know more about why two weeks and why that course and kind of what the underlying incentive there was, you can check out the video that I did on how I got into machine learning coming from tissue engineering. But in short, I was surprised, put on a project that involved machine learning and had absolutely no background in it and kind of had to learn it on the fly so that I could start working on the project once I got there. Now, as much as having a goal like take this entire course in two weeks was really helpful because it meant that I had a really clear target. There was no ambiguity about when I would be done. It also did feel very overwhelming in the moment because I knew that I had to do this in a fairly time sensitive way and there were a lot of lessons to cover. So when it comes to staying motivated for big projects, my second tip is to break it up into small, 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 small chunks. <laughs> for me, this is something that I rely on for learning or doing pretty much anything, whether it's learning machine learning or doing my PhD research, because between my ADHD and my depression, there are definitely days when I just don't want to do anything and having tasks that I can complete in, you know, 15 to 20 minutes is honestly pretty crucial to help me stay on track. A lot of the time, personally for me, I find that getting started on a task, doing one 15 minute task is actually enough to get me going the rest of the way. And two hours later, I've made more progress than I thought I would. It's similar to going to the gym, but I would definitely recommend breaking down your project into really, really small steps so that you can kind of get a sense of what you actually need to do next and you can ideally check off things as you complete them and see yourself making progress along the way, which I personally find really motivating. The third thing that I would do to stay motivated is actually have a plan for how I was going to celebrate once I finished a goal. And that can be anything from promising yourself that you can get $20 worth of takeout at the end of the two weeks to throwing a party with your friends, to making a YouTube video about it and sharing it with other people. But I think that especially if one of your goals is something that you aren't necessarily all that excited about, it's a sub goal on the path to some larger thing that you're interested in doing, it can be nice to have some other thing to look forward to that will signify your completion of whatever project you are trying to do, kind of like a little mini graduation ceremony for yourself. And while sometimes I do prefer to celebrate alone, celebrating with other people can be really nice too, as well as having them around when you're working on the project in the first place, which is why my fourth tip is if you can find community. Especially in the era of the internet, there are tons of spaces online where people are probably doing projects similar or the same as the one that you're doing, and you can bounce ideas off of each other, you can commiserate when things get hard, and celebrate when you finish a project. And I really think that having that community of people around you who are also working towards a similar goal, who can mentor you and who you might be mentors for, is just really helpful in terms of boosting your morale on a day-to-day -day basis and getting especially really big, and when I say really big, I'm thinking like six months plus, year plus long projects done. For example, for me, when it comes to my PhD, I would not have made it as far as I have without people like my advisor, people like my lab mates, the people that I work with, because they're the community of people that I've relied on and gone to when I needed help with things, who I've commiserated with when things 
don't necessarily go well, who I celebrate with when things do go well, as well as my friends from my PhD program, from other PhD programs, and in particular for me, friends who are not associated with academia. In fact, if you're under 18 and you're looking for a community of fellow students who are exploring AI before they go to college or before they pick a particular field, you should check out AI Camp, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. AI Camp offers a full-time three-week hands-on learning experience where you can build and deploy your own AI product, like all of these really cool products that past students have done. No coding experience is necessary, and if you apply using my link below, you are also eligible for or a full or partial scholarship to cover some of the costs of tuition. In fact, last year they gave more than 10% of their students a full scholarship and about 60% of their students a partial scholarship. Plus, attending AI Summer Camp can lead to amazing internship opportunities, as some of the students who successfully complete the program are hired to perform mission-critical tasks at AI Camp and other top startups in Silicon Valley. So if you are a teenager looking to get hands-on experience with artificial intelligence and join an online community of over 700 teenagers and staff who are all passionate about AI, apply for AI Camp using the link down below. Otherwise, if you want to check out my machine learning journey, I will link the video up here. You can follow me on all my various socials down here, and otherwise I will see you all next week. Bye!